What makes you real? Your voice? Your likeness? Your identity? In the world of deepfakes, these things are no longer unique to you. In this new world, reality is decided not by people, but by algorithms. Remember when I would drive you to school in my tiny Mercedes every day and we would listen to this song? Let me take you down, cause I'm going to strawberry pills. Nothing is real, and nothing to get home about. Strawberry pills. We just want to predict your future behaviors. Let me take you down. Imagine hearing your own voice uttering hurtful and insulting remarks that you have no recollection of saying. Imagine the fate of a divided country hinging on whether or not a piece of footage is real. Imagine being able to communicate with the dead. Well, thanks to the algorithms beneath deep fakes, you don't need to imagine anymore. Each of these things are already happening. The sanctity of your voice and your image is at serious risk. It's hard to imagine a more serious challenge to the sense of shared, reliable reality that keeps us linked together in relative peace. The deepfake artists need to be stopped, using whatever legal means are necessary, as soon as possible. These words are published in a blog post by Canadian psychologist Jordan Peterson following a series of audio deepfakes and an entire website that allowed users to transcribe anything they wrote into Peterson's voice. This is not Jordan Peterson. In fact, I'm a neural network designed to sound like Dr. Peterson. As you might imagine, the internet had some fun with that. Slob on my knob, like corn on the cob. Even though the site, notjordanpeterson.com, has since disabled this feature, Pandora's box, as it were, has already been opened. Artificial intelligence algorithms have reached a point where you can reliably construct sentences and phrases which sound indistinguishable from actual recordings, even being convincing enough to replace a live person speaking in real time. Yes, I'm sentient. The technology behind deepfake audio has already been used in large-scale fraud and scams. One victim of this was the CEO of a UK-based energy firm, who in October 2019 irreversibly wire transferred $230,000 to what he thought was a Hungarian supplier's bank account. But after a few follow-up calls and requests for more money, the CEO soon realized that he had been scammed. The phone number wasn't Hungarian, but rather Austrian. As for the quarter million dollars, no one has seen it since, and to this day, the scammer has not been discovered. Now, I know some of you are going to find it difficult to feel bad for a wealthy CEO who got scammed. But if even transnational corporations are falling victim to deepfake audio scams, then what hope do the vulnerable, uninformed populations of the world have to this level of manipulation? Terrifyingly, constructing artificial faces in the form of video has become just as easy as audio. Celebrities and world leaders have been the first targets of deepfakes. What started out as face swapping in pornography has expanded into fan-made films with replaced faces and lip syncing. One channel called Control Shift Face has an entire catalog of impressive film mashups using deepfakes. But beyond the jokes and the memes, this tool of deception is being used for disinformation campaigns that can create political instability. One such case of uncertainty surrounded a peculiar event that occurred in the Central African country of Gabon. President Ali Bongo's family has ruled Gabon since 1967. In the fall of 2018, President Bongo suffered a stroke and was kept hidden from the public for months, leading to growing speculation about his health and the fate of Gabon's government. But when the president's administration released his annual address in hopes to quell those fears, the video's strange nature only added to the rumor mill. 
Gabonaise, Gabonais. I want to show us, permettez-moi de vous adresser. Ridden with a jittery frame rate, President Bongo's eyes were not centered and he rarely blinked. His movements were robotic, and most puzzling of all, the background behind him resembled a green screen. While some of these anomalies could be explained by his recent stroke, national newspapers ran headlines suggesting that the video was the product of deepfake technology. Mounting opposition to Bongo's administration grew over the course of a week, putting forth the idea that the president was being propped up by disinformation. This uncertainty culminated in a military coup on January 7th, 2019, when rebel forces took hostages in the Capitol building and announced the restoration of democracy to Gabon. Ultimately, the coup was unsuccessful, being thwarted by government forces who were possibly supported by the US. The validity of the video itself has still not been completely confirmed or denied. When it comes to deepfakes, it's hard to tell where the truth ends and the lies begin. But the incident in Gabon has shown that merely the uncertainty surrounding a piece of footage is enough to threaten the fate of an entire nation. The deception made possible by AI technology runs so deep that even death itself is no longer a limitation. On October 29th, 2020, Kim Kardashian received a special present for her 40th birthday. In typical Kanye West fashion, the gift was a lifelike hologram of her late father, Robert Kardashian, who was able to speak to his daughter from beyond the grave. Keep doing what you're doing, Kimberly. You are a beautiful soul. Know that I am very proud of you, and I'm always with you. It's only a matter of time before gifts like these become available to the average person. Family heirlooms and old photos replaced with holograms and video recreations of friends and loved ones. And hey, why stop with the dead? There's no reason why we can't bring completely fictional characters to life in the form of holograms as well. The cycle of life and death is no longer an obstacle for deepfake technology. But the amazing ability to transcend death comes at the cost cost of losing something that makes us human to begin with, our autonomy. In 2018, the tragic shooting at Parkland, Florida left 17 students dead and 17 families broken. Two years later, one of the victims returned with a message. Yo, it's me, it's Guac. I've been gone for two years and nothing's changed, bro. People are still getting killed by guns. What is that? Everyone knows it, but they don't do anything. I'm tired of waiting for someone to fix it. The election in November is the first one I could have voted in but I'll never get to choose the kind of world I wanted to live in. So you've got to replace my vote. Working with the organization Change the Ref and the latest deepfake technology, the parents of Joaquin Oliver recreated their son in the form of an activist video. Joaquin's face was mapped onto an actor's body and his voice was reconstructed from an algorithm that was fed samples of his audio. Joaquin's double encouraged viewers to get out and vote for legislative change to gun laws. Even if you agree with this message, there's still something deeply unsettling about the medium used to express it. Joaquin Oliver never said these words and he never consented to being reanimated. One day, your own face and voice can be used to deliver a political message that you never signed up for. As with any new technology, the expansion of artificial intelligence is exponential, starting out in the hands of the few and eventually spreading to all. It's not just deep fake videos either. All forms of technology are improving and reaching a point where they are so deeply fake that it's hard to separate them from reality. You can even observe the capabilities of AI through the games that they have become the masters of. 
chess, Go, Mario, Tetris. The list of games that AI are out competing humans in only continues to grow. A few years ago, I made a video explaining the threat that AI poses to civilization and the scope of what we are dealing with. But as with many other AI-obsessed writers, I found it difficult to convey the immediacy of the problem with words alone. Most people find it hard to make sense of things like self-learning algorithms, goal alignment, and any number of data sets or equations that you throw at them. But deepfakes have changed all of that. The same AI programs that threaten the future of humanity now have a face we can point at. It's a bit of a meme amongst YouTubers who prefer to use only their voice when making videos, but I suppose you can view deepfakes as the face reveal of an AI that grows smarter by the day. And what is life but a series of games anyways? AI are built into the programs and software that are all around us. The further in time we go, it seems the more that artificial intelligence, not human intelligence, is the driving force behind the economy, technology, and the world itself. Even something as uniquely human as your face is merely another game for AI to outsmart us at. And the best way to play that game is to fight fire with fire. To counteract the deception caused by deepfakes, AI software is being developed by companies like Microsoft and Facebook as a way to identify the fakes. Well, that solves that problem, right? Civilization is saved. End the video, guys. Nothing more to see here. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> Well, not exactly. In many ways, things are just getting started. From this point on, a new arms race has begun between dueling artificial intelligence programs, one that is involved in manufacturing deepfakes and one that is involved in detecting and destroying them. Each side will continue to improve along with advancements in technology, presumably forever. And at some point along this advancement, we are not going to be able to tell the difference between deep fakes and real videos with our human eyes. It's likely that we will be relying completely on detection programs to tell the minute details apart when we can't perceive them ourselves. The result is a blind dependency on artificial intelligence to tell us what is real and what is not. It's even possible for nefarious actors to use this blind trust to manipulate people with disinformation campaigns. In a world where you can't trust your senses to tell you what's real, would you trust an AI? I wish I could keep telling you that our mission in life is connecting people, but it isn't. Inspector is there to deal with the future, the wealth of predictive knowledge of our species. Spectre showed me how to manipulate you into sharing intimate data about yourself and all those you love for free. Spectre is almost too powerful to comprehend. The poet would say, if anyone dared, ask him to analyze Spectre. If you see it, darling, then it's there. Amongst dozens of hilarious celebrity face swaps and viral memes, these clips are conveying a truth that everybody knows and yet that we have become numb to. The fact that we are being actively manipulated by tech companies for our data. S P. E Just give C all your data. T R E. This warning was created as a part of a mysterious art project called Spectre, designed by an equally enigmatic figure named Bill Posters. What does it feel like to take on the role and power of a tech giant? What does it feel like to have access to seemingly intimate knowledge and data of others? People you will never meet or never know. And what would you be willing to do with that data? Spectre is an interactive installation that tells a cautionary tale of technology, privacy and democracy, curated by algorithms and powered by visitors' data. Two of the main questions we wanted to explore with the Spectre project is, what does it feel like when our personal data is used in unexpected ways by powerful tech companies? And how, as a result, can that change our understandings of today? The steel monoliths of Spectre are arranged together in a modern day Stonehenge. And like the lost civilizations who built similar sites scattered across the globe, Spectre stands there as if to serve as the tombstone for our own civilization.
What does it feel like when our personal data is used in unexpected ways? In many ways, the price we have to pay to learn from the gods of Silicon Valley is our privacy. I don't know where the lies end and the truth begins. As the deception of technology increases, our grip on reality loosens. But what does it mean to be real anyways? What makes you human? Is it your voice, your face, your identity? Unlike the algorithms that we feed into, data alone does not tell the whole story. What makes us human is not merely our ability to mimic patterns of behavior, but rather to see the world through our own eyes. What's real and what's fake may one day be decided by a series of algorithms, but ultimately it is up to you to decide what really matters.